Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We'll be working with Overland College students this winter to prepare some amazing videos in math, science, English, and history to help you pass your teacher certification exams. Use these videos to help you in your studies and your preparation. And if you need some extra help, attend a workshop. We're holding workshops throughout the United States in Massachusetts, in California, in New York, in Florida. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today's problem is number 59 from the 53 Math MTEL. We're going to be exploring some core math concepts involving similar and congruent shapes. I'll start by reading over the problem. We'll cut to our Oberlin intern Conti to explain some things with similar and congruent shapes, and then we'll come back and solve this problem. All right, so let's look at number 59. It says, use the diagram below to answer the question that follows. They give you a diagram of two triangles, and it says in the diagram above, triangle OMN is similar to triangle RPQ. Which of the following proportions calculates PQ? So our missing side here. And we have, we're looking to see which one of these is a proportion that help, um, help us out and, and find the value of PQ. Well, what are the key words here? You got similar shapes, two similar triangles, and that we're going to be setting up a proportion. So there's two core ideas here. We also have this diagram that we have to work with. So let's start with the diagram first. Notice how these triangles, uh, uh, the, the second one is not orientated the same way as the first one. And we're dealing with similar shapes, and it's really helpful when matching up the so corresponding sides and angles. It's really helpful to have the, the two shapes um, visually uh, match up. So what I'm going to do before I even get into the, the other stuff is I'm just going to take my diagram. I'm, I'm going to reorientate the image real quick. I'm going to do that by just moving the P up here and now uh, redrawing the lines. Now everything's the same. But this new triangle, what happens is this bigger triangle, uh, triangle RPQ, now its angles, this angle and, and this angle, they all match up and it's a visually a little bit more um, easy to see. And also the, the sides match up, meaning 108 matches up with 27 and PQ, our, our missing side here, matches up with 19. So it just makes my life a lot easier when I go to the next uh, phase of the problem and set up the proportion. But before I do that, I want to I want to go to Conti and Oberlin College, and I just want to be 100% clear on what a, what similar shapes are and what congruent shapes are. So let's cut to Conti right now. Help us out with these two ideas. Take it away, Conti. Hi, Chris. We're going to break down what it means for these shapes to be similar. First, let's review what congruent shapes are. Congruent shapes are the exact same shape, like squares or triangles. They have pairs of equivalent angles and pairs of equivalent sides between them. Namely, there is a way to make our way around two congruent shapes such that we will pass equal angles and equal sides at the same time. Note that the triangles in this problem are not congruent because triangle RPQ has a side of length 108 and none of the sides in the triangle OMN have this length. But we are told that these shapes are similar. Similar shapes have the exact same shape and have equivalent pairs of angles, but their corresponding sides are just proportional to each other. This means that if we take one side in the first triangle and divide it by its corresponding side in the second triangle, we will get the same value as if we did this calculation with any other two sides and their lengths. Back to you, Chris. Thank you so much, Conti, for clarifying similar shapes and congruent shapes. We're dealing with similar shapes. The angles corresponding are the same, and the sides are proportional. Now, we're going to set up the proportion right now. Lots of different ways we can we can set this proportion up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this, the small one here, the small triangle, and the big one. And I'm going to look at the sides. I'll start with the big one here. I'm going to look at side PQ to 108. 
PQ to 108, and I'm going to match it up with its corresponding sides, 19 to 27. So PQ to 108 matches up with 19 to 27, and what I've just done is I've created a proportion with these two sides. Now we could have set up the proportion differently and we still could find PQ. All right, so, so now I have this proportion here. And what I'm able to do is I can, we can, if we wanted to go a step further, we could solve for PQ. We could multiply, we could find out how do we get from 27 to 108. We, we multiply the 27 by 4 to get 108, and, and then we would do the same thing to the 19 to get to the PQ. Now looking at these answer choices, which one matches up with what I have down here? Well, I'm hoping that you see that D matches up. Side PQ divided by 108 is, matches up with 19 over 27. And we've created a proportion with these two sides that allow us to either do cross multiplication or a bridge strategy to find out the missing value of PQ. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Thank you, Conti and Oberlin, for helping us out with this problem. Everyone have a great day. Take care. See you soon.